Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and members of Missouri Synod Lutheran Churches from North Dakota and Minnesota. That's what we're celebrating. We do so because of what's coming. We do so because of what's been promised. We do so because of the hope we are given in this Advent season. The hope of the one who is coming, the one whose Advent is being proclaimed. The service will begin after this opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry! And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Go on up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson for today is written in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8-14. through 14. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar. And the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But accordingly, or excuse me, but according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, the first chapter. We hear verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. 
Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from all three of our readings, but the focus is from Isaiah 40, 1 through 11. How are you doing? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I know. So we are in the second week of Advent. This week we light a candle representing peace. Now I can't speak for you, but my life and the world around me does not seem very peaceful right now. There are calls for action and violence. There are cries for justice from real or perceived oppression. There are voices sowing hatred and division. There are gasps of fear, panic, and desperation. We do not live in a world of peace. So why? Why light this candle, this candle of peace? Why are we talking about peace when there is no peace? Well, we do so because it's Advent. Advent, a season of arrival, that's what we're celebrating. We do so because of what's coming. We do so because of what's been promised. We do so because of the hope we are given in this Advent season. The hope of the one who is coming, the one whose Advent is being proclaimed. And so as we prepare, let's hear from some voices of Advent. This is from Isaiah 40, verses 3 through 5. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. 
Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and flesh shall shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So you see the Messiah is coming. That's what the voice tells us. The Messiah is on his way. He is coming and he is going to change everything. Why is he coming? Because we need peace. Because our lives are filled with the unrest and conflict and pain and turmoil that sin has unleashed on our world. Because there is no peace, he will come to make peace. And so again, we hear a voice of Advent, of how his peace will come. Isaiah 40, 6 through 8 says this, A voice says, Cry! And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower in the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely, The people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. And in our epistle reading, in 2 Peter 3, 10 through 12, that same voice says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be turned, burned up and dissolved. And the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? Whew. (laughs) Yeah, the the promised Messiah will bring peace, but that peace comes through fire. It will come through destruction. Yes, we need peace in our lives, and we need it now, but if we are at odds with that peacemaker, it will not be a hopeful or joy-filled advent. So perhaps we need to heed the voice again. And perhaps as we do, we can find a more comforting source for the peace in our lives. This time from our gospel, Mark 1, 1 through 8. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And then again from 2 Peter, this time chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So did you catch it? Did you catch the common thread? What brings these things together? It's repentance. Repentance is the key. Our lives are overflowing with distress and conflict from sin. It brings nothing but a need for peace. But when we turn away from that sin and turn toward the Lord, 
Because that's what repentance is. It's that turning. When we turn toward the Lord, whose advent draws near, whose sacrifice will set us free from the conflict of sin, when we do that, He graciously gives us peace, repentance, forgiveness. That is where our peace rests. Regardless of how unrestful and how tumultuous our lives may be, it will pass away. And in the advent of Jesus, we find a promise, a promise of hope, a promise of rest. Yes, a promise of peace. So, now as hopeful recipients of his promise, those who can repent, turn away from the unrest that sin brings in our lives and turn toward the Lord, let us once more hear that Advent voice. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. Behold, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please pray with me as Jesus has taught us to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you so much for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by hearing God's word. If you are able to attend local services, uh, if you're ever in the area here in Minot, I would like to invite you to worship with my worship community, the congregation where I attend. If you are in the Minot, North Dakota area, please join us at Our Savior Lutheran Church Sunday mornings at 815, 930 or 11. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to the following address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com, including links to other LCMS websites, congregation locations, and additional ways to donate. Thank you again for joining us today and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station. Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch is a place of hope and healing. With trauma-informed care and balanced learning environments, the ranch helps the most troubled, complex, and amazing kids. Through this faith-filled organization, children discover and become their best selves. Help us continue to help them. Donate online at dakotaranch.org or drop, shop, and save at any of our nine thrift stores. From the children and staff at Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch, 